today we'll discuss about pneumonia caused by mycoplasma pneumonia so this mycoplasma pneumonia is a cause of mild respiratory illness but it can sometimes uh, cause a less severe form of pneumonia known as walking pneumonia or atypical pneumonia infections are generally mild but sometimes can be severe most patients they recover without medicine but some patients might need antibiotics so talking about the epidemiology of this mycoplasma pneumonia so CDC estimates that around 2 million mycoplasma pneumonia infections occur each year in the United States. This mycoplasma is a crucial pathogen of community acquired pneumonia in children and young adults and it's responsible for about 4 to 8% of community acquired pneumonia cases in endemic period and 40% during the epidemics. Following this COVID-19 pandemic there has been increase in the mycoplasma pneumonia infection. This chart uh, shows the percentage of pneumonia associated emergency department visits with mycoplasma pneumonia diagnosis. So as you can see, there is a slow rise in the case of the mycoplasma pneumonia. So talking about mycoplasma pneumonia, uh, it's a bacterium belonging to the class molecules. Uh, it's a pleomorphic cell wall deficient bacteria, which is a short rod. It's a fastidious organism and it's uh, exclusively a human pathogen. There are a few factors which are responsible for the pathogenesis of mycoplasma pneumonia. So the first factor is the lack of the rigid cell wall. Uh, as this bacteria lacks a cell wall, uh, antimicrobials which target the cell wall like beta-lactam antibiotics, they are not effective against the mycoplasma. The next factor in the pathogenesis of mycoplasma pneumonia is that it associates closely with the host cells. This bacteria has this specialized atta uh, attachment organelle which allows the close association with the host cell. Moreover, this uh, attachment organelle also prevents the host's uh, mucociliary clearance mechanism from removing the bacteria and it also activates the innate immune response and produces local cytotoxic effects. Next mechanism in the pathogenesis is toxin production. So this bacteria produces a toxin known as community acquired respiratory distress syndrome toxin which is a which is an exotoxin and this toxin production helps in the colonization as well as it leads to the inflammation in the airway destruction via this uh, uh, interleukin pathway and via the direct cytotoxicity. Uh, next factor associated with the pathogenesis is the endocytosis. So because of the endocytosis of this mycoplasma pneumonia by the host cell, it can it helps to establish a latent or chronic disease state. Moreover, it uh, facilitates the evasion of the host immune response and uh, it interferes with the efficacy of the antibiotics. Moreover, they can replicate intracellularly. So endocytosis offers a unique challenge in managing mycoplasma pneumonia cases. Next factor in the pathogenesis is the autoantibodies. When antibodies are produced against the mycoplasma pneumonia, and they may act as autoantibodies since they cross-react with the human brain cells and red blood cells. So this might lead to some extra pulmonary manifestations like immune thrombocytopenia and transverse myelitis. So what are the risk factors? One of the risk factors is the AIDS. So this infection is mostly common in the young children, like from 5 to 17 years of AIDS and in the young adults. And recently, there is a, there has been increase in the cases in this group of two to four years as well. So it basically occurs in the crowded environments like school, hospitals, nursing homes, military training facilities. The risk factor for the severe infection include the, the recovering from the respiratory illness, weak immune system, and the pre-existing lung diseases like bronchial asthma, reactive airway disease. Transmission occurs through the respiratory droplets through close person-to-person -person contact. Incubation period is around one to four weeks. Usually patients present with either pharyngitis or tracheobronchitis or with pneumonia. So this tracheobronchitis is the most common presentation. Symptoms basically includes the fever and the cough, which is a gradual onset. And the cough is actually slowly worsening cough that can last for weeks to months. So this is one of the typical feature of the mycoplasma pneumonia infection, which can help us to differentiate the mycoplasma pneumonia infection from the other viral infections. Patient can also present with sore throat, headache, myalgia, malaise, or if patients uh, develop pneumonia, they can uh, present with the symptoms like mild dyspnea and the cough, which is initially dry, but later can progress into the moderate non blood is put on. Symptoms can be different in the children less than five years. They usually present with a sneezing, a stuffy nose, sore throat, watery eyes, vomiting, diarrhea, wheezing. A uh, patient uh, might not have obvious uh, signs on examination, but on chest auscultation, there can be scattered or localized bronchi, expiratory wheeze and scattered rails. There might be mild congestion of the posterior pharynx. Sometimes patient can present with a mild erythematous macular papular or the vesicular rashes. 
So why is it called walking pneumonia? This is called walking pneumonia because the patients, they seem better than expected for someone with lung infection. And with mild symptoms, patients may uh, not stay at home or in bed and they might perform their regular activities. And that's why it's known as walking pneumonia. A diagnosis is uh, made from the swab from the nose or throat or we can do the serology in the blood as well. Uh, WBC count is usually normal in 75 to 90% of the cases. A molecular test like nucleic acid amplification test is the preferred method of diagnosis. Other serological tests can be done like ELISA, complement fixation, immunochromatography, hemagglutination can be done, but these tests are not specific. However, fourfold or greater increase or decrease in the paired sera titers or a single titer of more than 1 is to 32 are diagnostic of mycoplasma pneumonia. Culture is usually only done in the specialized reference laboratories. It's time consuming and uh, it's not optimal for the treatment decisions. Next test we can, we can do is to look for the hemolysis because a mycoplasma pneumonia infection can cause autoimmune hemolytic anemia. So Coombs test can be positive and the reticulocytes count can be elevated. Imaging can aid the diagnosis. A chest X-ray might show unilateral or bilateral bronchopneumonia with reticulonodular pattern or patchy areas of the consolidation, moreover, more prominent in the lower lobes. Similarly, CT test can show tree in bud appearance, central lobular uh, nodular opacities, patchy distribution of the opacities, ground glass opacities, consolidation, or pleural effusion in 15 to 20% of the patients. The common differentials include the all other causes of pneumonia like aspiration pneumonitis and pneumonia, bacterial pneumonia, chlamydia pneumonia, coxiella bonnet infection, empyema, lesionella infection, lung abscess, Q fever, or even viral pneumonia. So we need to keep all these as our differential. Now moving on to the treatment. Mild infection usually doesn't require any treatment. Most patients, they recover with supportive treatment. However, if the infection is severe and the patient requires antibiotics, first-line antibiotics are macrolides like azithromycin. However, if um, there is a macrolide resistance or a patient cannot tolerate the first-line agents, second-line agents include fluoroquinolones like leofloxacin and tetracyclines like doxycycline. As these bacteria lacks Cell wall, they are naturally resistant to beta-lactam and other antibiotics which target the cell wall. So this uh, antibiotic resistance to the macrolides is an uh, emerging concern and the global prevalence is around 28%. And this uh, resistance is mediated by the mutation into 23SRNA gene. Fluoroquinolones and tetracyclines are the preferred treatment options for the patients with macrolide resistance. Complications can be in the respiratory system or in the other systems. In respiratory system, it can cause new or worsening asthma, severe pneumonia, or in patients with sickle cell anemia, it can cause acute chest syndrome. Now, whereas other complications include encephalitis, hemolytic anemia, polyarthropathies, renal dysfunction, septic arthritis, and some screen disorders like iridema multiforme, mycoplasma induced rash or mucositis, Steven Johnson syndrome, and toxic epidermal necrolysis. Prognosis is usually excellent if patient is treated promptly, and most of the patients are expected to make a full recovery. However, the immunity after the mycoplasma pneumonia infection is short-lived, so patient can again get reinfected. Next important aspect is the patient education. So all the patients with mycoplasma pneumonia, pneumonia should be Consult regarding the vaccination against COVID-19 influenza and pneumococcus in indicated patients. Patients should be advised to quit smoking and uh, we need to address the underlying conditions like bronchial asthma, diabetes and the congestive heart failure because they predispose patients to this mycoplasma pneumonia infection. These are the references which we used while making our video. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to our channel for more videos.